Hello this is Amit and today I'll show you Mail Merge. Now Mail Merge is a very useful add-on for Google Apps and Gmail accounts that will help you send personalized emails to a large group of people with very little effort. You can use Mail Merge to send personalized email invites, holiday greetings or even rich text email newsletters. Your Mail Merge emails can have inline images, they can have attachments and in the latest version of Mail Merge you can even schedule your messages and send them later at your preferred date and time. Okay, let's now see Mail Merge in action. So to get started, I'm on a blank uh, Google spreadsheet and I'll go to the add-ons menu and choose Mail Merge. Now you can find a link to download this add-on in the show notes. Now the first step I need to do is I need to convert this blank spreadsheet into a Mail Merge sheet. So that's simple. From the add-ons menu, I will choose uh, Create Merge Sheet and magically this will transform into a Mail Merge sheet. Now if you look at this uh, mail merge template, there are a lot of standard fields that you typically find in any uh, personalized email. You have the first name, the last name and other fields. I'll discuss these fields later but let's first see how we will add data to this uh, spreadsheet. Now there is uh, the simple way is that you can manually type the data. So I can type the first name, the last name, the email manually. Or uh, if you're sending an email blast to a large group of people, there is an easier way. What we can do is we can go to Google contacts and there we can create a group of people who we want to uh, send a mail merge to. So while I'm in Google contacts, I'll simply select one or more email addresses or contacts and then I'll put them in a group. And now that I have created a group in Google Contacts, I will switch to the Google Spreadsheet and from the add-ons menu, I will choose Import Contacts. Now it will show me a list of uh, Google Contacts groups that are available and I will choose the one that I just created and click OK. And within seconds, it will import all the contacts that are available inside that Google Contacts group. And now that we have imported the Google contacts in the spreadsheet, our basic data is in place, but we will add few more columns. Uh, essentially, whatever fields we are trying to personalize, we will add one column for every field. So for this example, let's say we are trying to send personalized emails uh, to different people, inviting them for a meeting with your executive and this meeting will be held in a different venue on a different date. So we will add a column for each of these variable fields uh, for date, for executive name and for the venue. And once the columns are in place, I'll quickly fill in some dummy data into these rows. Now in this version of Mail Merge, you can also send personalized attachments. So for instance, you can send one file to one email address, other set of files to another email address. So your body of the message can be different. Your attachments can also be different. So how do you add files to your Mail Merge? Uh, it's very simple. You go to the file attachments column and we will add the URLs of the files here. Now there are two ways to add URLs. One is like I go to my Google Drive and there are all the files that I can attach to my Mail Merge. So I can right click on any file and then get the link and I can paste this link in the file attachments column. So your mails can have multiple attachments too. So in case you are planning to send uh, two attachments to the same person, you can just uh, get the link of the other file and add it to the same column separated by a comma. So there's an even easier way as well. Instead of manually copying pasting the URLs, what you can do is go to the add-ons menu and choose add file attachments. Now this will open up the Google file picker dialog and uh, I can filter files. So let's see, I want to see only PDF files and I can select one or more files and then hit the select button and automatically the URLs will be inserted in the corresponding file attachments column. So let's do this one more time. I highlight the row where I want to insert the file attachment and then I go to the file attachment menu and this opens up the file picker. Now let's filter by images this time. I'll select an image and click the blue select button and automatically the URL of that file will be inserted into the file attachments column. Next comes the most interesting part of mail merge and that's scheduling. So let's say you have a bunch of emails but you don't want them to go now but only they should be delivered at your preferred date and time sometime later. So what you can do is you can go to the schedule date column and specify the date and time and the messages will be delivered accordingly. 
The idea is simple. If you keep the scheduled date column blank, those messages will be delivered instantly. But if you put some value here, some date and time here, those messages will be added to your queue. Also, you can have a mix of things. So for instance, you can have a batch where you can have certain messages that are delivered instantly and certain messages that are delivered at your scheduled date and time. So we are all set to send our first mail merge. So I'll go to the add-ons menu and choose configure mail merge. Uh, the dialog opens up and you'll see that there are a lot of fields. Uh, don't worry about them because the, most of these fields are optional and they're only required for advanced users who want to have more control over the, how their mails are sent. So let's quickly go through these fields one by one. First is the email alias. Now in case you have multiple email addresses and you want to send mails on behalf of another account, you can choose that here. Uh, then it's the sender's name. This will show up in all the outgoing messages in the header of outgoing messages. So it's always a good idea to put something here. Uh, then in case you want to CC or BCC someone in your mail merge, you can just add their email addresses here. In case you want to CC or BCC multiple people, you can add that as well. Just remember to separate the email addresses by commas. The discourage replies option is mostly recommended for people who are sending email newsletters and they don't want their replies to be coming in the inbox. Next you specify the reply to address. Now in case you want people to reply to a different email address than your default address, you can specify that address here. And if you have a Google Analytics account, you can select the ID from this drop down and uh, all your outgoing emails will be tracked using Google Analytics. So that's mostly about the configuration of mail merge and now let's pick a template. Uh, we have two options here. We can either pick a draft from our Gmail account and that will be used as the template or what we can do is we can use the text area here and compose our own template in HTML. To keep things simple, let's start with uh, writing our own HTML template here. So uh, you have the subject line and you have the message body. Now when you're sending a personalized email message, uh, you, you have two parts. You have common text that's common to all messages that go out and then you have the variable parts. So the only thing that we need to remember is that those variable parts has to be in uh, double brackets, double curly brackets. So for instance, like in the subject, I want, the, uh, I want to put the first name and uh, the first name should be different for every message that goes out. So what I'll do is I'll just put first name and I'll enclose this uh, field name with double curly brackets. You can even have multiple fields in the subject line. So remember we had a column called executive name. So I'll put that as well in the subject line. Again, I enclosed in double curly brackets. Now let's focus our attention on the message body. Here again, you can include uh, one or more variable fields and all those fields have to be inside double curly brackets. And uh, the only thing that you need to remember is that uh, those column names that you have in the spreadsheet and these field names, they should match. So if you have executive name as the column name in the spreadsheet, you should have the same name. You should use the same name in the uh, email subject or email body. So this text area supports HTML text as well. So you can use the B tag or the strong tag to bold any piece of text. You can use span tags to change the color of fonts. Uh, but if you're not very comfortable with HTML, you can use the HTML web app to format your text. So what you have to do is uh, go to the HTML mail web app and compose your email in a WYSIWYG mode. Now this supports HTML tables, this supports colors, fonts, everything. And once you are done composing your email, just go to the source button and it will show you the HTML source of your message. So just copy paste this into the text area of your mail merge spreadsheet. For this example, I'll just use the simple HTML tags that I already have in the text area and I'll click the run button to start the mail merge process. Now, if you look in the lower right corner, it's showing you the progress in real time. So it's telling you uh, what it is doing in the background. When the mail merge process is complete, so I close this window and let's look at the mail merge status column. So remember we had five messages in our mail merge process and two were scheduled for sending later. So what it has done is it has sent those three messages and the two have been scheduled. Uh, they will be automatically sent but if you look at the status it's telling you how long before those messages are sent. So the messages are sent. Now let's open my Gmail account to see how, the, how they look like on the recipient's computer. So I'll go to my Gmail account and go to the sent items folder and open the messages that have just gone out. We'll open the message that was sent to Stephen and uh, you know, if you look at the subject line, if you look at the message body, you see that all those variable fields that we had in double curly brackets, they've been replaced with the actual values from the spreadsheet. Also, if you remember, we had put uh, attachments, so those attachments have also gone out. 
I'll show you another cool feature of mail merge that I haven't discussed before. So I'll go back to the mail merge spreadsheet and uh, open the configure mail merge option again. Now here you see an option in green that says only send drafts. Now basically what happens is when you send mail merge those ma mails are sent out automatically. But in some cases you may, you may not want to send out mails, you may only want the program to create drafts in your Gmail account that you can review and send them later. So for that you have this option of only creating drafts. Now this can only be used for simple HTML emails and not emails that have attachments or inline images. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just click this button to create the drafts and uh, let's go back to Gmail to see how those drafts look like in my actual Gmail account. So if you open any of these uh, drafts that have created by mail merge, you can see that they are just like the regular mails that were sent out from mail merge. So all the variable fields, those in curly brackets, they have been replaced with the actual values from the sheet. So this is useful in case you want to send, uh, in case you want to review your messages before sending them. Okay, that was about creating draft, but now let me show you how you can create a mail template in Gmail and then use that as a template in your mail merge sheet. Now the advantage is that uh, you can use the rich text editor of Gmail to compose your email template and the other advantage is that you can include attachments. So in case you want to have an attachment that you want to send out to every recipient, you can just put that attachment in the Gmail draft and the mail merge process will automatically include that attachment in every email that goes out. So here's my beautiful Gmail draft ready to go out. It has inline images, it has rich text formatting, and it has even attachments. So I'll switch to the mail merge spreadsheet but before I run mail merge let me show you one more thing. Now sometimes you may want to have attachments for specific recipients and not for others. So you remember that our gmail draft already has two attachments but you may want to ha include more attachment for specific recipients. So you may do that here inside the file attachments column. So you are all set go to the mail merge menu and choose configure mail merge. Now here uh, we'll choose the gmail draft as the template type that we just created and hit the run button. The messages have been delivered so let's go to the gmail mailbox again to see how they look like and there you have it. All the attachments, all the gifs, everything is preserved. I hope you find mail merge useful and here are all the places you can go in case you need any help and do visit my website for more cool google scripts and projects. Thanks.